On the eve of the climate summit, King Charles threw open the doors of Buckingham Palace. Your Majesty, I don't know what to do anymore. The King believes it's vital the private sector gets on board with the climate challenge. The industry that I work in, fashion, is the second most harmful in the, in the world to the planet. If we do not act today, we will risk leaving an ever more desperate inheritance for our children tomorrow. Hearing no objections, it is so decided. Nearly 200 countries pledged to limit global temperature rise to 1.5 degrees at last year's climate conference in Scotland. This week's COP in Egypt is about agreeing on how to deliver that, which will require steep carbon cuts by the end of the decade. It must put us back on track to cutting emissions, boosting climate resilience and adaptation. But recent global events are tempering expectations. We're seeing geopolitical conflict in many parts of the world. We're seeing a nature and biodiversity challenge alongside the rising costs of energy and gas prices all around the world. Critics like climate change activist Greta Thunberg are sceptical the talks will lead to any real change. The way that COP27 would for me be considered a success or a step forward would be that more people realise what a scam it actually is. 35,000 delegates are expected to attend COP27 this week, including 100 world leaders. Prime Minister Anthony Albanese won't be attending, instead sending Energy Minister Chris Bowen to represent Australia, the largest carbon emitter per capita in the world. Australia will be a willing and active participant in these discussions. And could lead the global discussion in 2026, with Australia to launch a bid to host COP31 with Pacific nations. This is an opportunity, of course, for Australia to remind the world that we're back. We're back at the international table. COP27 gets underway tomorrow night. Jenny Lavelle, ABC News.